Life Call City Ritual Meeting to Order, May 1st. I'm going to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight. Our first item up is our open public forum. Anybody not on the agenda wishing to address the council? This is your time to speak. Is there anybody wishing to address the council? Seeing nobody, we'll move on to item three. Approval of the agenda for this evening. Is there any corrections or additions? Mm -hmm. No additions. I'll make that motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item number four, approval of meeting minutes from April 3rd and April 18th, 2019. Is there any questions or comments? Um, I found a correction when I was reading the second time underneath item number six in the motion that was made. Um, it says Third Street South East East. So East can get removed. Put in that place. For item number six in the motion. Oh, okay. yeah. Underneath the 18th. Yeah. So gotcha. I'll eliminate that extra East. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, that's all I got. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments about the minutes? I'll, I'll look approve. for a motion. I'll approve the minutes for April 3rd and April 18th. I have a motion. Do we have a second? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Approval of bills paid. Anybody have any questions on any of the bills? If not, I look for a motion. I'll make that motion to accept the bills paid. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consent agenda for this evening, resolution 136-19, approval of April 2019 journal entries. Item B is resolution 137-19, approval of 2019-2020 liquor licenses. Item C is Resolution 138-19, Approval of 2019-2020 Tobacco Licenses. Item D, Resolution 139-19, Approval of April 2019 Donations. And that donation was made from the American Legion to Alliance. Alliance to the Fire Department for turnout gear. Acceptance of People Services April 2019 Report. The resolution for the donation says April 1st for ado uh, adoption has been corrected for the official June May 1st. Okay. Um, on the bottom, down by the signature's head, that should be made. There we go. Just a clarification or question on the liquor license approval. Mm -hmm. Did all these individuals make it out or are you making them out ahead of time? What do you mean? These applications, yep. I understand that one they, might not be in business, so I'm just wondering, did they have to apply for it? Did um, all of these apply for it? We got all returned but one at this point. So we have on here that we're uh, this approval is pending receipt of all required documents. Okay. So now what we'll do, because they had, we gave them until today to turn it in, we will make contact with the um, property or the business that has not returned to see what their plan is. Is that the final one here? Yes. Okay. So, we don't mail anything in just yet. This is just kind of. I was just wondering if they came and, and not filled it point. out. At, not at this point. They were mailed the application that comes from the state. Everybody was mailed. They fill it out. Everyone has returned it. Um, some of them are still waiting on insurances because they won't cut them that early, and that's fine. Um, we just won't send anything to the state until we receive all uh, all paperwork needed. But we'll be double checking on the final one. Okay. That's the clarification. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. With those four, five items on the consent agenda, any other questions? Make a motion to approve consent agenda as it is. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 140 19 2019. Turn it over to Mike. Okay, um, resolution. Um, 
140-19 is for the 2019-2020 uh, liquor license, license, pardon me, for JNS lanes. Um, obviously, because uh, this is something that uh, the mayor is personally involved with, uh, we'll have to uh, get an approval on this and we'll also need a roll call. So we're looking for approval of uh, the liquor license um, for the renewal for this one. So um, looking for a resolution approval for 140-19. I'll make that resolution 140-19. Motion by Tim. Second. Second. Second by Pat. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, roll call. Um, first on the list is myself, Mike. Um, I'm a yes. Tim? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Uh, Jim? Upstand. Okay, and Pat? Approved. Okay, so that, as noted, uh, Jim is upstand, everybody else approved. Okay, so I will bring the meeting back over to you. Anything else we need to do on that? Thanks, Mike. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jim. At this time, we'll move on to the city engineer, Dave Plummer, with our street projects. Uh, pretty brief update tonight to talk about a little uh, summary of what we talked about at the last meeting. Uh, basically, for those people that won't get a letter in the mail because they weren't involved in the hearing in the past in, in August, so the people watching. We are putting an insert in all the utility bills that will be mailed out this week. We're in the process of stuffing everything that will explain that this um, project has been postponed. All right, well, so in addition to that, those, so those that are watching online and on the tape copy and whatever, at least we uh, get the word out that uh, there will not be a large street project this year. Uh, this year's street project is going to be pushed till uh, next year or further if the funding uh, requires. So basically until funding is, uh, is warranted and we have the funds we need, we're going to hold off on that street project. A portion of Ivy Avenue, we're going to switch to a maintenance project and you will still see that this, this, uh, this summer here. We're going to quote those out probably with the council receiving numbers uh, early in June, maybe I can guess. There's a couple of markets going on right now and I don't want to one we'll to see where they're at before making their bids for us, and it'll just help us in the end. So, um, so basically, look for our numbers in early June, probably after June, the first meeting in June. Uh, we can look forward to a uh, moving portion, uh, moving forward with two blocks by the avenue, and if the bids come in favorably, we're going to do some uh, resurfacing on Third Street Southeast as well. Um, and that one's a little bit more of a, a bit of band aid because we have to do utilities under that one eventually. Uh, but Ivy Avenue doesn't have utilities to do, so it makes sense to do a more maintenance project there. So, pretty short and sweet. I, mean, I guess I don't have a, a lot of questions or, or more information for the council unless you guys have questions for me. Letters have been formed for the um, properties that did receive a hearing notices last fall, so those will be sent out separate from the utility bills also. So, some of them will get the double because they'll be in their utility bill, but then it also has a full letter explaining everything else. Um, as far as the, the project is perfect, perfect. and then for those residents impacted on Ivy Avenue, there'll be separate correspondence to them, letting you know a schedule, a contractor, uh, in the event that anybody has any driver work that they want to try to coordinate with the contractor. We have a lot of country driver notice, and that's necessarily concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll coordinate with those residents on Ivy, so they're in the loop. Make sure they know what's going on. So, have you seen any bids or approval of bids throughout the county on price of term? It has been coming in, um, let's call it variable at best. Um, we've seen easy maintenance projects where it's uh, where it's a good amount of pavement on uh, wide open county roads coming in in the $60 a ton range or even the high 50s. And I've seen as much as the low 80s for, for some more, let's call it detailed, small work. So I've estimated $80 a ton. I think that's pretty close to what we're going to see based on the volume we're looking at. Uh, but it will depend upon who's who's busy around that time and whether we can get a better number. Did you have a chance to find out about Main Street with the county? Uh, the county and Main Street, yes. So the county is, uh, they are not going to do Main Street this year. They have an opportunity to bid it next year if, if they would like to, or we'll bid it with our project. Um, so they're going to hold off one year. If they're resurfacing off Main Street, it's going to be three blocks on the west side of Main Street and then uh, a portion off by the city shop as well. I'm kind of going to be one person to set up there. So, we'll know more on the county portion of next year, uh, but they are definitely going to hold off for us. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions for Dave? Thank you, Dave. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you, David. Yep.
All right, at this time we'll move on to the department report. Uh, the police department. First, I'll start with a monthly report for um, March in the city of Richmond. We had 103 total incidents, um, eight medicals, five suspicious activities, uh, 60 traffic stops with 64 warnings and 17 citations. In those traffic stops, we had two warrant arrests and then 30 miscellaneous calls for service. Um, we had the Chiefs Conference, it was, I think it was two weeks ago now. One of the things that I brought back from there was it's called the Lights On Initiative. It's a nonprofit organization out of uh, the Twin Cities. Um, what they're doing is that they started it down there and they're trying to branch out to more out state Minnesota. It's um, trying to promote positive interactions with law enforcement. So we would stop a vehicle for headlight out, taillight out, minor equipment stuff. Um, we can give a voucher to that person. They then go to a local business that um, has connected with the nonprofit organization, have it fixed, and the nonprofit organization actually picks up the fee for um, the repairs. So we've, we've reached out to a couple of local businesses, one in Cold Spring, one in Richmond here, um, and they're going through the process of setting up the building and that type of stuff with them right now. So once that's up and running or we get approved for that, then uh, hopefully it's something that we can start doing. So just trying to put push more positive interactions with law enforcement. So One of the other things is legislation is passed, which is going to go into effect on August 1st, the hands-free legislation. Um, there's been some advertisement that's going out, and I'm assuming we'll hear more here and see more of it over the summer, um, which means you can't have your phone in your hand driving anymore. Um, basically, you can only operate it through uh, voice commands or one-touch commands. Um, it's nothing that you can sit there with, it, with your phone in your hand anymore and drive down the road and talk on it. You either got to have a Bluetooth or your PC and that type of thing. So um, there's a lot of information that's going out there. One of the places that you can go is handsfreemn.org, um, and it has a lot of information there for people that want to look into it, but just trying to get the word out that starting August 1st would be something that we will be enforcing. So, And then Bike Rodeo, um, May 8th at 5 p.m. in Cold Spring behind the DEF, and then May 22nd in Richmond at Centennial Park at 5 p.m. We'll be starting. Um, Try to encourage people to bring their kids out, have their bikes registered um, with the police department in case we can find them later on around town and get them back to the the right people. Also, we'll have a, an obstacle course and bike safety stuff for the kids, and also you will be able to enter for a um, raffle for a free bike that will be drawn that was donated by Myers Hardware. So, hopefully, we get a good turnout and have good weather. So, that's all I have, unless you guys have questions for me. Okay. Uh, have you had a chance to work or to have extra patrols in Second Street East? Yes. Um, I don't have the numbers of stops, but I know we've got a couple of officers, officers that have spent quite a bit of time there. Um, the truck, the speed truck should be out there. If it's not out there right now, it should be out probably by the end of the meeting tonight. Um, it was on the charge this afternoon. Um, but yes, we have had a, a good number of extra patrols over there. Thing. Um, I know this isn't happening in Colston, but you have a mock car crash demo just like we did here in Richmond. Yes. I don't know what dates those were. It's in June, but off of the top of my head, I don't have that date, but I will get it to you guys. Um, it'll be open to the public. It'll be... I don't have the date off the top of my head, but uh, it'll be in Cold Spring at uh, the north parking lot, um, north of the elementary school, which is where it'll be set up. It'll be... I'm open to the public. We'll have food and everything there, um, and I will get that date to you guys. That's fine. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Move on to Arena and Parks. Kevin Mooney. Do you mean Council Mayor? Kevin. Are you in the audience and viewing at home? Um, start off with my start off with an arena update. Uh, the ice went out on March 18th. We um, took the ice one extra week this year past the figure skating show because uh, the uh, it's a problem with the resurfacer at Painesville and the hockey so youth hockey association needed wanted to go another week, so we went another week past our normal ice out. Um, since ice out, we have been really busy. Um, we've pretty much gone through the entire interior of the building, cleaning and painting every room. Um, we removed all the bleachers off of the walls in the arena area, uh, cleaned and repainted that area. 
we, uh, every paintable wall in the arena itself was repainted just to give it a good clean look. We went through the lobby, locker rooms, uh, I'm sorry, the lobby, the concession stand, and the lobby bathrooms, everything got torn out. The floor was uh, refinished uh, and relaxed. All the counters were pulled out of the concession stand and everything was reattached to the walls, clean, painted, and uh, that stuff. Then we started working on the uh, locker room areas. We basically renovated the locker room areas. We've got one locker room that we're halfway through right now, and uh, that will be done too. We've done some rematting in the locker room areas. Uh, that's more belching down that was donated by NSP back in the day. Uh, we pulled that belting out. The seams were wrong for ice skates. Yanked all that out and uh, put in. We're, right now we're using rubber matting that we have in the building. We'll have to replace that once we go in with ice again next fall. But uh, uh, it's been a it's been a pretty pretty in depth. Every spare moment has been put into those uh, renovations, just those cleanups. A um, couple of things that we plan on doing uh, with the remainder of the off-season, uh, we've had some requests for a, a handicap uh, viewing area uh, to the ice. So we're going to uh, put in a handicap accessible viewing area in the northwest corner, northeast corner of the rink. So basically when you come in, to the arena from the outside, it'll be on that corner there. Um, just get wheelchairs up higher over the board so they can view. Um, and the other, the other big project that I want to try to accomplish this year is starting to paint the I beams. We're starting to see some surface rust on the I beams, um, so we'll take that on and. Uh, Start working on that as we go along. I'm talking with uh, Kurt over at Winters about the the right materials to put on on a rusty metal or a metal that's beginning to rust, and then and then getting a finished coat on. So that's going to be another. That's going to take a lot of hours this summer. So um, I was in painting locker room three, and my neighbor, our neighbor, came over and uh, said, "I heard a loud boom in the back of the building." and then saw, saw what looked like the release of a gas. I went out, it was at the condensing unit. Um, it looks like uh, we probably sprung a leak or something in one of the lines going out to the condensing unit and we lost Freon. It's clearly that's what happened. Um, when we shut down in the, when, when ice comes out and we shut down, we isolate most of the refrigerant inside the building in the holding tank. Um, so I don't know that we had a complete loss of our refrigerant, but really expensive stuff. It so happened about a month ago I was talking to our refrigeration company about our refrigerant is R22. R22 is going to be a discontinued product in 2020. We've talked about you know the transition from R22 to a different refrigerant anyways. So we may just be expediting that process. Last time we had a Freon loss up there, it cost us $8,500 to replace the R22. So we're going to have some designers coming from uh, Carlson Stewart, who's our refrigeration company. And we'll just try to figure it out, see what we got going on ahead. But we have an issue. It happened out of season, which is really nice, but it's never nice to have an issue. So um, we'll see where we're at with that. Um, as far as dry floor events go, we just completed a, another really successful beer and wine expo. They had just shy of 1,300 people attend the event, and, and again, it was great. Um, and as moving ahead into the summer, we have three weddings and then three quinceañeras scheduled for the summer. They're later in the summer. I think we have one in June, but July and August. We have those. Another arena item is we've had some some talk of an expansion. The expansion is adding locker rooms and a fitness area to the west side of the building. So where the building, the gap between the building and the outdoor skating rink um, is really our only movement. That's the only area we have any movement right now. Um, so 
I'll be meeting with with our with our tenants, the the high school, the youth hockey, the figure skaters, and just kind of explore some opportunities moving ahead. Um, it's nothing more than exploration right now, and we'll see if uh, we'll see if it goes somewhere. Try to do you know find out who wants to do fundraising, whatever, and um, and that. So we do have a little bit of a locker room issue, um, and I do know that the high school program would like to have a high school locker room. So we'll look into that uh, coming up here too. Uh, moving on outside the parks, uh, Royals Park is up and running. We turned on the water on April 25th, and then this past uh, Sunday, the Royals played their first game, which was a 17 to one victory over Roscoe. Um, so yeah, you guys had a good home opener. Uh, the new mower for the park was uh, was purchased as and has been in use. They have dethatched the entire field and, and it worked really well for them. Um, they're moving ahead with uh, their park improvement plans that uh, that were agreed on and put into place last year. Uh, the new storage shed has been ordered um, and they started some field uh, improvement projects, cutting sod and. They've asked us for some help and some use of, for some equipment too. So they're moving ahead with that. I think they had a couple of quotes come in for their concrete work that they want to do out there. So I don't, I haven't seen them yet, but I know they're working on that. So they're moving ahead on that. And just to remember, you know, we're hosting a regional tournament this year out there. So that's two weekends of a lot of people coming into town. So uh, it should be really good for the park and really nice for the community. <coughs> Centennial Park is starting to see some activity. Today we opened the, the uh, pavilion, got the water turned on, got the facility cleaned up, got soccer nets moved around, picnic tables moved around. We did uh, spend a few hours out at Centennial Park. Um, as far as uh, Little League goes, we're going to have two major teams and two minor teams this year, so basically the same number of teams that we had last year. The only new thing is an evening t-ball program that's going to be started up. So. It's something that hasn't been done in a long time. They had some parents that wanted to take it on, and uh, and they're rocking and rolling with that. The uh, Music in the Park concert series is, is locked down. All the groups have been contacted, and contracts will be going out uh, this week or early next week. As it stands, we have three of our seven concerts uh, sponsored, so we're still looking for sponsors for the concerts. Um, and the first uh, event that Music in the Park group is hosting is uh, we're going to have Gabe Noonan uh, out for the uh, Richmond Fire Relief Fire 55 bike rally. And uh, so that is on uh, Saturday, May 18th. And we will have uh, Gabe Noonan and will be performing from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. of the time that things are wrapping up with the bike rally. So just to give a little more ambiance to the, to the program. And, Add, added value. Um, the blue bikes are now a function of the parks department and the program is as of today active. Okay, which means all the bikes are out. Um, Jax has everything that they need to give out usage of the bikes. So they are rocketing their role in there. Um, the public has free use of bikes by providing an ID and then completing a waiver form uh, at Jack's. There's 14 bikes in the program right now, six kids and eight adults. And last, year's pro last year the program had 261 bike uses for the year, so it's pretty successful. Um, we reopened Nature Park today. Uh, we've had it closed. We've had 90% of it open. We've closed the river portion of Nature Park for about the last month because of high water. Um, the water is back down under or beyond inside of the banks. It's still soft, but it's usable. If somebody wants to go down there and set up a lawn chair and fish, they could do that. It's just a little soft, but uh, that's, that's open right now. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, we have community cleanup day this Saturday, the 4th, uh, from 8 to noon at TKI, Tom Kramer, Inc. 
um, just out by the golf course between here and Cold Spring. There are flyers around if people would like more information about it. Um, they can call TKI or City Hall has a copy. I think the prices that they have are awesome. Um, free appliances. You got, you got an appliance you want to get rid of? Free. Uh, compost and stuff like that? Free. Prices are really good on it. So if you can't find a flyer, call TKI or call City Hall and they can give you some pricing. It's, it's a really good deal. Uh, for the residents and for the city. It's on the city's website also. It's on the city's website also. Perfect. Uh, Recorded Trail. We haven't been doing a lot with meetings, but we've been doing a lot without meetings, if that makes any sense. We've been fundraising a lot. We've got two applications. Uh, we've got two requests out to for our $1.22 million that we need to complete the gap between Cold Spring and Rockville. Uh, one of them is the LCCMR, uh, which is an organization of the uh, Minnesota State Lottery. And we have a request into them. They have 290 proposals for $200 million. So, I don't know, I'm thinking 1.22 should be easy for us to get, right? <laughs> um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, I've gone down to the Capitol twice this spring and have testified uh, for our bonding request, uh, which is sponsored by Representative Lisa DeMuth. And we seem to be moving through really well. Uh, both, both times I went down, it was smooth, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of questions, not a lot of snickering, and, and uh, I think they've heard enough about our pro program. So we'll find out more about both of those. Uh, this coming later in the spring or summer, hopefully one of those fish bites, and uh, and we're doing that, and we're we're constructing a trail next year. So our next meeting, we canceled our meeting for uh, May, so our next meeting will actually be Thursday, June sixth at Rockville, nine a.m. And uh, that's a lot of stuff, but that's all I got. <laughs> Any questions, guys? And the uh, ladies? You said that you uh, you know where this uh, leak is? The only reason that I know where it is is because when she came and got me, I was able to, the time frame was like within minutes of it going off. I didn't hear it in the arena. She did. She came right into the arena and told me about it. So it's on the back of the north condensing unit. It's not that it can't be fixed. I'm sure it can but it's the refrigerant that's the issue. No, the issue is actually is to get that closed as soon as possible. It, the more moisture that's in that system, the more it's It's isolated possible. right now? No, yeah, I'm, I'm working mean, with that CSR, yeah. Yep, I get I'm that definitely on that. And especially with any type of rain or humidity, that can trash your whole condenser. Yeah, yep. Kimberly, did you have a question or a comment? I did. Um, you said that the blue light um, are functional. Did we find someone to do the maintenance on it? And yeah, that's me. That's all there. Yep, that is not a function of me. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions, folks? No. Yes? Um, kind of silly, but is the website for the Royals games updated yet? I don't know about their website, but you can get their league games at... Um, Stearns County Baseball League.com, I'm thinking. Just Stearns County Baseball, and I'll take you right to their to the to the league's website and you can get those. And I think normally you don't take holster schedule um, in like the bank in, in the entryway and stuff too. I know they've done that in the past where they've done a full schedule there and maybe they post it around town also too. And now that we've got that new fancy digital message board out there too, I, I was talking about today, getting their schedule on there and just having their games yep. log in and out throughout the course of the summer. It's just it's a good way to use that, yes. It's just, uh, yeah, we'll get that done. And that's for the record. Yeah, the record keeps it. Tammy does a good job keeping updates and, and schedule in the record as well. Kudos to Tammy. Hey, Bounce, any other questions? Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kevin. At this time, we'll move on to the EDA's report. The mock car crash yep. It is June 13th. It's on the north side of the elementary school in Cold Spring. Um, the, it's, like I said, it's, there's a free meal that will be served that will start at 5.30. The crash itself will start at 7. And I think it's just a good event for everybody to come out and take a look at and see how 
from police to rescue to ambulance to everybody that works together to go through an event like that. So anybody that wants to come out, that's when it will be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move on the ADA report. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Hold on here. All right. Um, yeah, we did have a meeting. Um, basically, it was last um, April the 6th. 16th, pardon me, I'm sorry, on Tuesday night. Uh, the main thing we've really been talking about mostly with the EDA um, has been um, with the person that we've contracted out currently right now, Tracy Ryan. Um, we're just trying to establish, um, you know, the, the moving forward uh, with how we can continually maintain um, our businesses that are on Main Street and also how we can continually uh, develop um, are certain areas within the city uh, for what we want to be able to look at doing with other uh, businesses and and so she's been kind of doing um, last meeting we went over some survey things uh, that she was kind of um, talking about and some action plans that we would like to maybe look at and move forward with um, along with one of the things that we did talk about was um, was um, looking at, at how we can work as an EDA um, and with also the local businesses and what they need, um, you know, what's their request, what do they want, um, you know, where, what are they looking at and seeing what the EDA can do for them. Uh, so that's kind of one of our main focuses currently right now uh, and stuff too. And we're kind of working with Tracy Ryan on uh, basically getting a, a, a game plan and kind of on where we want to continually move forward. So that's really kind of been eating up the majority of our EDA meetings um, and just kind of wondering, you know, where, where we're at um, and then what we can continually uh, strive for, you know, basically on where we think the growth is. Um, one of the questions that got brought up a lot too and, and um, was, um, was signage. I think that's, that's one of our big issues that we really want to look at doing, utilizing Highway 23 a little bit more. Um, a lot of people, you know, feel that sometimes our only business area is is just those businesses that are on Highway 23. Some people that are from out of town don't really even know we have a downtown area. So we're feeling that um, we can utilize 23 uh, from a major signage standpoint. Um, hopefully that maybe drives some more people in and around our downtown area and you know, continually uh, help out our, our our main street businesses that are continually going. So. Um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. I, I can't really think of, of anything else. Um, anybody on the council have any questions? Would it, would it be fair to say that you're looking at putting goals together and then how to fulfill those goals? Yeah, exactly. That was kind of the one thing that we're looking at when, when Tracy was talking at our last meeting here too, um, giving us some suggestions. And then what we're going to look at doing is determining, um, obviously, with these on, on what goals we'd like to look at, um, even ones that we can achieve um, a little bit quicker than other ones in comparisons or one where we're looking at forecasting something a little bit more that might take us, you know, X, maybe a few years or whatever that may be. So Once so. the EDA is happy with the goals and plans that they have in place um, and have uh, time frames on them, it will then be brought to the council for approval right. also. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's more or less for you guys, the EDA to have them and somebody asks, well, what is the EDA doing for the city? Here's their goals, here's their plans, and, and it also will guide the EDA in the future of what to continue to work on. Um, so that was a big part of um, reviewing some ideas of what are important, what is important to the city, um, and how to put it into real life action plan. That's more of a uh, yeah, yeah, doing the one years and the three years and the five yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. Stuff yeah. like that. So there's, there's obviously certain things that we can do currently right now as an EDA um, that, that we can just, you know, there's small possible little improvements or small goals you can go and reach, you know, for say the remainder of this year. And then you're looking at, like Tessa was talking about too, and you're looking at, you know, okay, well, what do we feel within within one or two year goal? Where do we want to be at? And so that's kind of what we've been working on. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Tessa, for kind of clearing that up. <laughs> no problem. Okay, have any questions? Anybody else? Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Next meeting? Oh, our next meeting, yeah. Thanks, Pat. May 20th. May 20th. Thanks, Jim. City Hall. Uh, no, the 21st. Correct? Monday or 21st, sorry. Yeah, I have the 21st. 21st. Yes. Okay, 21st. Always open to the public. Tuesday night. Tuesday nights. All right, 
We'll move on to Planning Commission. Um, as you see, we have Resolution 141-19, Approval of Variance Request for Front Yard Setback at 767 First Street uh, Southwest East, which is the C&D Granite okay. property. Mm -hmm. This was reviewed by the Planning Commission and was sent forward to be addressed by the Council. The only, change, the only real variance that they're asking for is a difference of 10 feet from the setback from the middle of the road versus the... From the curb, um, curb. instead of the right-of-way. It's a matter of Just 10, 10 feet. feet is all it is. Yeah. It's pretty minor, so... Has this remodeling whatever is taking place right before the variance is taking place? No. no. They have two projects they're working on. They have addition A and addition B. Addition A was okay to move forward with, and addition B is waiting for this variance to be approved. And actually, the permit is uh, being reviewed as we speak, so they don't even have a permit for addition B yet. Until the variance is approved. Approved. Yeah. Makes, makes sense. Spectron uh, was told that it can't be issued until the variance is approved. Right. Good. So. Okay, it's the second part. I make a motion to approve the variance if it's a, you know, with everything and only allows 10 feet encro encroachment towards the road, mm -hmm. not to any other property corner. Right. Correct. Yeah. I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. This does, there's still going to have ample parking in the corner. Yeah, so what's going to, whatever, what's going to end up happening is um, the product that they have outside right now is going to go into the addition that they're putting on. So that'll open up parking within um, where the material granite oh, is right sure. now. Right. So then that will help get the parking um, off the streets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay. And in the temporary right now, they'll be moving everything across the road into the neighbor's property. They, they built that up last week. Mm -hmm. So okay. when they do construction, nothing more will be on the road than what needs to be. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Other matters of concern for this evening, uh, Richmond Fire Relief Association is having their Fire 55 bike run May 18th. The registration starts at 7.30. If you have any questions, contact any one of your fire members. Have we heard how that is going and everything too from sign up participants? Anything yet at all? Mm -hmm. Do we have a rough idea? We've got uh, quite a few sponsors. Um, sign back up and that stuff there. We have some riders, but not a lot. The last year, riders didn't come in until that week before. Okay. So as far as the registration was going. All right. So okay. there's perfect. a website they go to to register and, and all that. So okay, perfect. Thanks, Chuck. Chuck and all the all the approvals for the routes have all been. Yep. Through the company and stuff. And and all that. Got copies okay. and all right. Good. Thank you. Our next meeting is May 16, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Anything else anybody would like to add? If not, thank you. Thank you.